Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll be talking about what is data science. I'll walk you through different parts of data science, uh, what tools are used, uh, and then I'll give uh, one example of a restaurant where data science could be used to solve a particular problem. And finally, I'll list a couple of job position keywords that you could search uh, for open positions in data science. So let's get started. The definition that I could find for data science in Wikipedia uh, is upon this slide. It says that data science is an interdisciplinary field. It is also related to data mining and big data. And likewise, my perception of data science is similar. Uh, I think it's comprised of three main areas. One is algebra, statistics, mathematics, mostly statistics. Uh, the second is computer science. Then you have the domain knowledge, which would be your uh, background in a specific area. If you are from computer science, you are good in that area. You'll have to learn the other two. Uh, same time, if you are in maths or statistics side, you'll have to learn a little bit of computer science and maybe a domain knowledge or domain of your interest. If you are like me, who is from neither of those two and uh, have a domain area of interest, uh, for me it's biomedical engineering. In that case, you have to learn both computer science as well as the statistics and mathematics side. Branching out from data science, we have artificial intelligence, which is AI. And from what I've read, uh, machine learning is subset of AI and subset of machine learning again is deep learning. Now, if we look at the different areas, uh, specific uh, topics that you need to read and learn would be these. In the area of uh, statistics, uh, it would be important to learn uh, statistics and algebra. It will be important to learn matrices, hypothesis testing, probability, variances. On the computer science side, you have to know how to do programming, understand data structures, and also understand how some of the important algorithms work that you would be using uh, in the analysis. In the area of domain knowledge, it could be engineering, biology, arts, travel and tourism, uh, any area that you are in, uh, you already have uh, expertise in that area. For example, if you are in uh, civil construction industry and you know what materials are used, what are the construction methods used, etc., etc. So that helps kind of uh, understand the problem holistically. Next, uh, let's look at tools and theory in each of these subtypes. In AI, for example, if you are interested in training artificial intelligence or AI players to play against humans in video games, then uh, reinforcement learning is a subject that uh, would be needed. So you'll have to study that. If you are uh, in machine learning, uh, there are uh, two main categories. One is supervised learning, uh, other is unsupervised learning. And the difference between those two is that in supervised learning, each data record is labeled. Uh, whereas in case of unsupervised learning, the data set is unlabeled. And so uh, there are different methods uh, to uh, treat uh, these problems differently. Uh, in case of supervised learning, there's linear regression logistic regression, decision trees, support vector machines, k-nearest neighbor, random forest, xgboost, neural networks, etc. And in unsupervised learning, you have principal component analysis, k-means clustering, db-scan, hierarchical clustering. So if you do not understand uh, these words right now, it's completely okay because I will be uh, working through these uh, topics and creating videos in future uh, so that uh, you can learn all these methods. The coding tools uh, for machine learning primarily are Python R, and a uh, little bit of SQL. Python is by far the most widely used programming language 
um, and it has really nice libraries such as the scikit-learn which already has uh, functions written and they're easy to implement r is really good uh, for statistical analysis i've used uh, it uh, mostly for statistical analysis sql is a must have i guess uh, because if you're working in a company and you need to download data sets the query of that data set is written in sql so uh, this would be the first step you write a query pull the data set onto your local machine or your uh, cloud machine and then from there you can write your code either in python and r to either create a model uh, or train the model or, or get predictions from that moving on to deep learning uh, this is further involved uh, mostly dealing with neural networks you have convolutional neural networks cnn recurrent neural networks rnn long short term memory lstm auto encoders and the coding tools that are available for this particular area are tensorflow keras cuda cafe tno torch h2o etc so the path to data science uh, in my experience uh, is a uh, arranged like this initially you have to know coding so if you do not know how to code that would be the first step to learn uh, basic coding for example if statements for loops at the same time you have to know statistics and algebra so vector uh, manipulation matrices understanding uh, parts of statistics which is uh, mean mode median your know, test of significance understanding types of data distributions and then once you have that down now you have the background to uh, learn in-depth coding tools that are specifically geared to machine learning and deep learning here uh, i would first suggest learning getting into machine learning and then if you are interested you can then dive deeper into the next topic of deep learning once you get a handle on the concepts and theory behind how the methods work and how you can write simple codes on toy data sets to pull the data analyze it train your models get the predictions and see how the predictions look you are in a very good position to uh, look at uh, problems that are uh, related to your area of interest and there are lots of uh, open source data sets available that you can download and use here uh, having domain knowledge helps you understand uh, the data from different perspectives and that ultimately uh, helps solving the problem in a way uh, in more than one way so you have uh, different solutions you can give the businesses to solve that problem now uh, if you are looking into machine learning or deep learning uh, there are different tracks so different specializations you can have i suggest choosing one or two uh, areas that you are most interested in because there's so much technical details i have found it's difficult to learn everything uh, for in my case i'm mostly interested in image analysis uh, i'm also interested in data analysis and data visualization what that help what that does is you can uh, put all your energy into learning theory and coding tools that are geared towards solving problems in those specific areas only so once you have learned the uh, theory you have the coding tools down uh, you have worked with toy data sets a lot and you feel comfortable that now you are uh, ready to move on to real world problems so uh, getting into real world data sets one thing i'd like to share is the real world data sets are completely sometimes different than the toy data sets in books or tutorials and the reason is because real world data set is messy you have to spend a lot of time cleaning it putting it together and getting it in a shape and form that you can use for analysis once you have that then you are ready to go and do the modeling 
training your models and making predictions um, practice 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 that is my only suggestion to uh, get um, more and more proficient in your uh, uh, understanding of the problems understanding of how the codes work understanding of how the uh, theory works to solve a particular problem and there you go that's how you could become a data ninja let's now look at one example here we have a restaurant and the owner is uh, asking us uh, do you have a solution to make customers happier and uh, this could be uh, solved by using data science here you have certain customers that are not at all happy and right now there are three menu items listed on here so what can we do now since you have already learned the principles of machine learning uh, once you have done that you'll be in a position to tackle this problem first point is getting the data the data related to the business such as location of the restaurant distance from offices hours open nearby restaurants etc at the same time we can do a customer survey of uh, for that restaurant and ask the customers uh, if they are willing to share their name employer age range etc what this does is all this information could then be used as parameters when we are doing the actual modeling for making predictions or finding uh, certain problems with the business uh, one uh, point we can get started with is looking at the location of the uh, customers that come into the restaurant here we can see there are uh, dots which represent the customers and we have our restaurant on the uh, right bottom corner of the screen and there are other cafes also located in the same geographical area so what can we do here because we do not have the labels for these uh, customers so this can be treated as unsupervised learning problem and we can use clustering to kind of identify groups uh, of customers or groups of people in that particular geographical location and then we can use that to segment based on the location from the restaurant let's say we have created four segments here and now we can go to the next step and take segment one and analyze it further voila now we have a classification problem we can as you can see in the top chart uh, we have the weekdays listed on the x-axis and the times when the restaurant is open on the y-axis. Uh, the dots represent uh, individual customers and the colors of those dots represent the company to which they belong. Here we have A, B, C, D, E companies. Instantly we can see that the data definitely has some trend. The red circle here shows that on Monday most of the customers are from company a and similarly we can go down the x-axis and see that the company b is on tuesday and so on moreover we can see that the people are grouped on specific timings during the day 12 to 2 pm is the lunch time and there are a lot of people at that time at the same time at the bottom of y-axis we have 8 to 10 pm those are people who are probably in for coffee before going to work or maybe a breakfast that's pretty interesting now let's look at the top right corner there is a, another group of uh, customers there which are only on fridays and that's in the evening hours after off after office hours after five or three to five that's pretty interesting uh, that we have located that particular group of customers now moving on to the bottom chart we can see that across the days weekdays monday through thursday the ratings are pretty good four to five stars only on friday the ratings are poor that could that be a problem maybe because we see a lot of people on friday evening maybe the restaurant gets work uh, overloaded and there is little staff to handle the request and that's probably what gets the customer frustrated if they have to wait long to get their orders so we have found the problem there
now we could go ahead and suggest additional uh, measures to the business owner the restaurant owner uh, how about a smart menu robot system that could be created using deep learning uh, method methodologies for example face recognition or recommender systems where if a customer comes in the system recognizes the customer wishes them welcome to the restaurant and the system would also have uh, data about their prior visits what they had ordered when they had visited the restaurant and based on that uh, the uh, ai system could uh, suggest options on the menu uh, such as salad dessert or grilled dishes and maybe that will just make the customer happy for making their life easier and they can quickly place an order for that so uh, thus we have now uh, given an example and here as you have seen we can then go ahead and uh, uh, tell the business owner that the problem was that overloaded uh, staff on friday evening and that was causing longer wait times for the customers which got frustrated and possibly gave poor ratings because of that now the recommendations would be to hire additional staff uh, for friday evening uh, so that the process would be efficient of ordering preparing food and delivering it to the customer tables additionally if the restaurant owner is interested they can also uh, invest in ai systems to personalize customer experience um, as we saw earlier uh, with the menu robot that was it so i hope you enjoyed that example uh, now our customer our business owner is happy and we can see the ratings are up before closing uh, i would like to share this slide as well here i've listed uh, titles keywords of jobs related to data science and data analysis uh, some of these uh, positions may be complete from completely different areas but overall the coding tools the um, methods or the theory that we have have uh, shown in the past slides apply to most of these uh, fields so if you are trying to learn those things these would be the prospective candidates for uh, future job searches thank you uh, for your time and i really enjoyed sharing my experiences here i hope you like them as well please feel free to share and comment uh, i'll try to respond to your comments as best as i can uh, thanks